Uh, I expect because we have the same value system that we will be partners for a long time. Um, I listen to Shimatsu and they listen to me. And together, we and our colleagues can build solutions to whatever we need, integration of methodologies, new approaches with new technologies, um, ways in which we can address important problems together. It takes, it takes a village. And particularly, I'm interested in technologies that use near infrared spectroscopy, sometimes called NIRS. And uh, this particular technology has the capacity to look at the brain oxygenation levels. And we do that when we do some neuroscience experiments. My challenge in the research that I'm doing now is to work with new technologies that allow imaging of two people in natural dynamic interaction situations so that we can understand how the brains adjust to situations where there's a natural, reciprocal, dynamical, real life and meaningful social interaction between people. We are actually interested in monitoring the brain oxygenation in newborns and infants that were born with a condition called Beth Asphyxia. What we want to know is how these infants grow up and what issues they're going to have as they grow up. So to do that, we use FNIS to look at the brain oxygenation levels uh, and the brain activity and try to use that information to prognosticate these infants of how they're going to be when they become two years old and five years old. That way, we can actually help the clinical team to treat these infants and help them with their new development. In recent years, our main subject is using FNIRS to study autism. We try to find out characteristics in the FNIRS signal to characterize the autism and eventually to make diagnosis of this disorder. Currently, we know the diagnosis of autism solely relies really on the observation. However, as an observation-based diagnosis, it has at least two shortcomings. First, it is subjective. It means different observers may give different evaluation based on the same observation. And second, it's not easy to do an early detection because when the children is small, for example, one year old, the behavior is not stable, it's changing. We have to wait until two or three years old to give a reliable diagnosis. So that's why we use FNIRS, try to find the characteristics with this autism and try in the future to give a reliable imaging-based diagnosis. I think that uh, near-infrared spectroscopy um, can potentially can contribute a great deal because we have so many psychiatric disorders uh, such as anxiety disorders, major depression disorders, Alzheimer's perhaps, different types of behavioral disturbances of one kind or another that are social in nature. And they, they're diagnosed by social um, behaviors and yet we know almost nothing about the neural circuitry and interpersonal interaction in those particular conditions. And this technique promises to provide those answers for us. So I think it opens a whole new genre of approaches and possible opportunities for understanding mechanisms of disease and strategies that lead to treatment opportunities. Uh, and I do think uh, these instruments, uh, first one, uh, the, the ones with the wearable technology are very excited. So, you know, Simanzu has the Line E system, which is a wearable instrument that allows us to actually monitor outside the lab. And I, I'm actually expecting a lot of developments to come out of that, because we're actually doing something that other technologies cannot do. The strong impression I have on Simanzu is service. Whenever we have questions, they give us, us help very properly. 
I've been um, very lucky that I'm, I'm collaborating with them. And I'm not going to settle for second best, and neither is Shimatsu. So, we're partners. 